man, what a beautiful Sunday morning it is. We got Jason Ferris down here. We were going to do this last night, but we had too much fun. So here we are now. Um, Jason has been in the the professional world for how long? Mm, January would be 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about how standards are different depending on your job and elaborate on why people think cops should have higher standards than they are, but in reality, why they are what they are. So standards explains should be the name of this video here. You want to give us uh, who you are and yeah, so I'm, I'm Jason Perez. Um, I, uh, again, I'm a 16 year law enforcement veteran. Um, I currently work for a, uh, fairly sizable, uh, agency, uh, in South Mississippi. Um, I've been, a law enforcement firearms instructor now for eight years, uh, eight, eight and a half years. Uh, I hold some other instructor qualifications, uh, agency armor, and I've been assigned to uh, uh, some type of tactical unit, uh, tactical team for almost 10 years. Um, of course, my full time job is as an investigator, but I work patrol. Um, been a patrol supervisor, uh, held numerous positions. So pretty, pretty decently varied background. Relevant. Yeah. Very relevant. Yes. And of course, my <laughs> what little free time I have, um, I own and operate Hot Iron Gunworks. So, uh, and I do stippling and grip modifications on polymer frame pistols. So all the plastic fantastics can all, be better. All, yes. All the plastic poking, um, uh, belongs to me. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, we'll just get right into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, you know, he's going to be shooting his first USPSA match with me today. He came up to uh, Central Mississippi in my area yesterday for an intro to competition seminar and then stayed here overnight. And then he's going to shoot his first um, USPSA competition. Haven't you done Steel Challenge or something like that? Uh, so I, I've done three, three Glock matches now. Uh, the local one to me, and like 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, and yeah. then 10 or 12 years ago, I shot a couple uh, outlaw three-gun matches. Oh, uh, yeah. But that's that's about the extent of my... That gets expensive quick. Competitive. Well, and these were like, you know, sh show up in your chest rig and with your, uh, you know, end of the world AR and your, your Glock 19 uh, and yep. just uh, run a gun and have fun. Um, these... They were sanctioned at one point, but we I didn't compete in a sanctioned capacity. So it says you're going to be your first non-GSSF uh, sanctioned match. Yes. Um, why, as a cop, I mean, you, you are literally more than good enough to be an instructor and train all the other law enforcement down in your area. Uh, why are you still seeking continuing education and, and trying to be better and why did you choose this avenue to do that hmm. well i mean number one um it just uh seems like a ton of fun hmm. um but number two um roughly end of 2020 i went to a tim heron uh his practical performance class i think it's called two-day class and uh Great diagnostic shooter. Yes, I, I mean he he is for someone who really wants to uh, learn the minutia of of fundamentals and mechanics. Uh, absolute ten of ten would recommend. Um, He's he, a grandmaster, by the way. So yes, if there's he, anybody that knows anything about fundamentals, it's going to be GMs of USPSA. He is that guy, and he's very well spoken. Uh, his attitude and how he presents it is uh, is really good. Yeah. Um, super kind and humble guy. But like I say, you know, we shot a mock USPSA stage um, to start the class mm. with, and I was the only cop there amongst a bunch of quote unquote weekend warrior uh, competitive guys. And I just, uh, I saw within about the first two or three shooters that I was going to be at the, the bottom of the stack as far as being able to perform with a, with a handgun. And I was, yeah. blew my mind, it humbled me. And that's really when I started seeking instruction outside of law enforcement channels, uh, tactical uh, training, 
I, I knew right then that if I really wanted to get the fundamentals and mechanics of shooting a handgun down, uh, the competitive shooters were where it was at. And so competitive shooters, I mean, or anybody in that in that realm of shooting, that's what they do. They don't have yes. to worry about going out on patrol, de-escalation, proper paperwork, uh, traffic stops. Well, their their only tactics are shoot good. <laughs> are, are are related? They do have tactics if yeah. you think about it. Problem solving a stage. But their yeah. tactics, yes, their tactics relate to stage planning, um, their movement throughout the stage. You know when they're going to engage what target in what and what order. How. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they do employ tactics. They're just not tactical in the uh, commonplace use of the term. But they absolutely do have tactics of their own. They're just not necessarily real-world defensive tactics. Exactly. But the mechanics, the fundamentals, you know, we've, we've talked about this many times. Shooting is shooting is shooting. Yeah. Fundamentals are fundamentals. Mechanics are mechanics. You know, shooting and moving is the, is the same steps involved. Uh, you know, uh, shooting, getting angles on, on t targets from behind cover translates to shooting around walls, shooting around walls and, yep. and things like that that you do in, in these competitive uh, events. We even have no shoots for like you know you have no that shoots, don't need you to have be shot. Hostages uh, or <laughs> hostage targets, yeah. Um, High consequence, you know, stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and they're varied with all the uh, the black markers over uh, over uh, covers over targets. So yep. some of them can be quite challenging, uh, as I've seen. So again, my my thing is the better I can become at mechanics and fundamentals to where it's second nature, the myelination is there. I don't have to consciously think about is my grip right? Am I seeing my sights? Um, those kind of things. Now I can devote mm -hmm. that mental horsepower, as, as I call it, to actually solving the problem at hand. What is my threat doing? Where's my next available cover? Are what there are obstacles doing? in the what? Yes. What What's are, my radio saying? All of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all of that. So I can I can devote that conscious thought to those things versus having to worry about am I going to be able to hit the target or not? I like it. Conscious problem solving. Uh, so, in your professional opinion, knowing what a cop has to do on on a day to day basis, um, not just investigator, but just regular patrol guys. Do you feel like the standards that they have, the qualifications that they have to meet in the academy, as well as their <laughs> once-a-year qualifications, are adequate for the job at hand? I mean, well, we're not talking SWAT guys. No. Uh, I mean, you can't. I mean, how, how many people go to the range once a year, maybe two or three times a year, and see a, don't see a, a like a problem with their shooting? Like, don't see it. And and take take aside. And they don't know what they don't know as well. Take take aside the guys who uh, dry fire religiously to make up for lack of range time. But just your average Joe who goes to the range casually, you know, once a quarter, let's say, and are they really performing at a at a level under zero stress conditions, where the target stationary, they're stationary. There's no time constraints. Not a two way range. You know, are they? Are they truly proficient? No. So, you know, the basic training that a, that a police recruit or, or cadet, whatever you want to call it, that they get, in most cases, I would say is, is adequate, the initial training. But then beyond that, there's no, uh, in many, most cases, let's say there's not the continuing education and training, you know. So, no, I'm... It's not adequate. It's not adequate. It's not on a logistics side and, and funding though. Mm. Do you think that we do enough given the funding? Like we're only allowed so much. We're only allowed to play the cards that we're dealt. Every agency has a different amount of funding. Mm. Every state has a different amount of things for funding for their academies and things like that. Um, like, do you think there's enough money in the budget to produce, let's say, half of the uh, patrol guys to be as efficient with a gun as you are no 
not even half. <laughs> there's not. Um, there, there, there's not. And of course, because that's time off of patrol. That's you know, that's, there's there's scheduling. There's there's, there's ammunition. There's overtime that's got to be paid to cover shifts wow. and cover these guys coming in uh, or paying them to come in on their off day. Um, you know, we talked about this a little bit last night. Uh, the the community can't afford the police that they're really asking for, especially especially nowadays. They they're asking for so much out of out of the average everyday patrol cop, and there's simply no way um, to afford that. And I say that my agency um, we're fortunate we have uh, more than adequate budget. Our training budget is. Uh, way more than anywhere I've ever worked in the past um, because I've worked for agencies that literally could not afford to buy duty ammunition at, at, at a given time that I've had to bring ammunition from my personal stash to work so that new guys or a part-timer would have duty ammunition. Correct ammunition. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they were literally <clears throat> carrying um, full, metal jacket. full metal jacket. They were carrying ball like ammo on, on, on duty, and I'm like, <laughs> no. You know, so <clears throat> you also have to consider, and again, you know, we talked about this earlier, you got to consider that shooting a, using a gun for a cop, you know, being in a Such defensive a small, shooting, small it's, small it, chance. It is absolutely, um, very small chance yeah. over your career um so we have to balance how much time do we devote um on something that's may never get used um versus how much time do we devote to training them to things that they're going to use every day mm -hmm. uh you you know you, you brought up de-escalation that's a big thing nowadays uh, I don't disagree with it. If you can talk someone down, why wouldn't you? Um, why wouldn't you? know, because at the end of the day, we should value human life. Um, Absolutely. Pre to, preservation of life. Society as a whole has just cheapened the value or, or completely undermined the value of human life. And, and to me, that's... And overvalued the craziest of things. Yeah, that's, that's a topic for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> but like I say, de-escalation, interview and interrogation skills, verbal judo, um, you know, unarmed uh, defensive tactics, all of those things are, are things that are going to be used just about daily. Yeah. Um, so on a list of priorities, they're up there. Right. So should we focus more on spending the time, investing the training for those things? Yes, you know, we should. Um, because otherwise... It, we're just we're getting into diminishing returns just like you and i as um competitive people we want we strive for improvement all mm -hmm. the time um but there's a certain level we're like but we're also we i think we both hit that that level of diminishing returns where your improvements yeah. are what we get smaller out of 16, smaller increments yeah. what we get out of a 16 hour class with tim heron is a little less than uh, a D class shooter that's new into this. Oh, but absolutely. Also, we also have a if we if we choose the, the the training wisely, we'll see it in a different light and understand it on a different level than a newer person would as well. So yes. while while our actual measurable performance gains may be less, our mental gains also may be more. As long as we're again being very picky and correct in the decision of who we go to seek out training from. Yeah. And, you know, the, the topic is, is standards. Um, you know, I, I definitely think we could have more realistic standards, more realistic qualifications. Um, but again, you, you start running into folks who can't meet that. Um, and we're already in, we're already under, understaffed. Yeah. And you can't, you, you can't, fail let's say a third of your you know then you'll have third, no police force <laughs> third of your department and and yep. and reassign them to a desk job in a in a non-sworn capacity you just yeah, can't do it, that it wouldn't work out so i mean you, you have to you have to balance you literally things. it's a juggling act yes 
You remember, do you, have you ever seen the the chart of levels of automaticity? Oh yeah. And like at the very beginning is FBI call passing an FBI call is like the lowest level of automaticity. <laughs> well, and I mean, there's a big difference between being able to pass a qualification because most qualifications only require a seventy a certain, or eighty percent. Exactly. Um, like our qual, you could, I think you could literally put all eight rounds at the 25 yard line off the target and still pass and still pass if you get everything else in yeah still pass like you could yep. you could just shoot them in the berm mm -hmm. or not shoot them at all yeah uh, <laughs> well you know on the other end of that chart um you got the grand master usbsa mm -hmm. shooters basically the other extreme and like uh, a sub two second build drill and like, there's so much, there's so many different name drills and things like that in between. Those yeah, there's far extreme. There's a whole lot of distance between. Yeah. The left side and the right side of the. Chart. But at the very beginning is like the minimum level of automaticity was shooting. Just we're just talking shooting guns, pistols, to be even more exact. Passing an FBI call. That's yeah. like the lowest level of automaticity, and and people well, would think FBI. Oh wow, that's our standard. Well, and it is a standard. But man, it's a it's a pretty easy low on the level. Well, and talking automaticity, you know, subconscious uh, reaction. Uh, you watch, you know, your you watch a qualification, you know, you watch the line, and you you can tell folks who are comfortable uh, with their gun, folks who are experienced with their gun, and folks who are well trained. Um, you know you compare those to watching someone who like you say only hits the range for annual call and you, you you see it right off the bat it's not just a speed thing it's just a familiarity thing the familiarity. you know guys yeah. guys are having trouble getting their uh retention devices mm -hmm. defeated on their uh duty holsters and yeah. they're struggling to put the mag in correctly so but yeah. on so performance related training related because we, we've kind of made law enforcement sound like this, just, you know, it, it's, it, they suck, which <laughs> frankly, a lot of them do. But they're good at their job of being a peace officer, police officer, and law enforcement. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen guys who yeah. struggle to qualify with a handgun, but their... Which I'm not mad about, to be honest Their interview you. skills are just master level. Yep. Um, they're... Verbal judo is excellent. Their um, their report writing mm -hmm. is superb. Or they make, you know, just an absolute jam up investigator. Um, My dad was that way, you know. Yeah. He was. I mean, because that's not their primary job. And did the most of it as investigations, um, narcotics and homicide, and just no offense to my dad, but man, he sucked at shooting. <laughs> it just is what it well, is. But you could not. You could not out knowledge him when it comes to investigative work, knowing and that's what knowing you're doing the laws, every knowing single day. people's rights and being able to make uh, make things stick in court and yeah. public appearing and doing PR stuff like it. I mean, day in, day out, that is what you're doing. Just yeah. like me, you know, I, I joke with people, I write endless social media search warrants because I, I do do um, an inordinate amount of work with social media. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in my particular investigative specialty, that stuff I use every day, day in, day out. That, yep. that those are things that are evidentiary, that yeah. are going to win or lose cases, or you know, get indictments or not. I've got to be fluent in the uh, in the walls. Mm -hmm. I've got to be able to take a phone call, um, be able to tell somebody on the spot okay this is the charge that matches the elements that you've you've told me happen all that stuff stuff i use every day and even as a quote unquote tactical guy i mean yes you know once twice sometimes three four times a week uh, on a busy week you know yeah we're we're using tactics we're 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 toting guns um like for real for keeps um but that's still not my primary job. That's like a 5% of my time assignment. And the other 95% is sitting at a desk behind a computer, um, you know, looking, looking at uh, 
bad stuff. Looking at bad stuff. <laughs> looking at looking at evidence. Looking uh, at stuff that most people don't want or, to look or, at. Or writing reports. You, yeah. you know, uh, when you have narratives that go fifty or sixty pages long, mm-hmm. just typewritten paragraphs, you got to be good at that. You, you know, know, taxpayers' money uh, is is better well spent making sure we have proper convictions and your time is better suited to actually get the bad guys off the street well and i mean that's, that's a huge constitutional issue because guys aren't familiar with the law they don't understand the law they don't yeah. have knowledge of the case law behind those statutes or behind particular uh, circumstances then they're potentially making bad arrests they're potentially wasting vi- time, vi- violating wa- wasting uh, people's money. rights so Get in, in worst case scenario, getting the department sued, or that. I mean, um, that's or the city, or man, it's. It could go. We could go down a long rabbit hole on that yeah. stuff. But back to performance. What I figured out in my career, and what some of my uh, peers have figured out, uh, unfortunately, not more of them. At the end of the day, just like for you, to improve as a competitive shooter, you're going to spend time on your own. Um, training, mm-hmm. dry firing. I mean, you see my little dry fire set up yeah, in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, and I, I, have, cones. I have dry fire set up at home. I have dry fire set ups uh, in my office. I, I don't yeah. have plaques and awards and stuff, knickknacks. I have dry fire scale targets. And when no one else is in the office or late in the evening or whatever, um, you know, me and, and one of my coworkers, he's got the same setup. That's what we do. Uh, yeah. If it's only air gunning transitions, you know, we'll do a few minutes of that. But ultimately, it's on the individual to maintain their continuing education and training. That's that's something a lot of my cohorts may disagree with. But you look at other um, professional fields, um, lawyers, doctors, nurses, teachers. Teachers is another one. They're they're relatively uh, underpaid, let's say. Yeah, for sure. Everybody can agree. Especially they here in Mississippi. Uh, yeah. But how much education and training do those folks seek out on their own time that they have to pay out of pocket for? <sighs> Too it, much, honestly. Yeah, I mean, if they for want... the ones that care. If they want to move forward and progress their uh, career, they... they they're going to have to come out of pocket. They're yeah, going to have to devote for sure. some, some time, money, and effort to doing that. So that's what I tell. That's what I tell these new guys who are just getting into my career field is. At some point, if you really want to, you know, be the best you can be, you can't just rely on agency training or mm-hmm. your agency sending you to training. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to um seek it out on your own um and it may be some of the best training you get uh realistically yeah i I have gotten way more out of some of the you know private label classes i've done shooting related um outside yeah outside of agency training or agency funded training let me say that um so it's definitely a good investment i'd say so (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I, and I'm, I, I'm biased because that's how I make a make most of my li- living is teaching people how to shoot Mo Gooder. <laughs> well, that's that's one thing that constantly comes up, or I won't say constantly, but it's come up before in uh, in some of these uh, Facebook groups, for for example. You know, I, I get to arguing with with some random person about training and and things like that, and either they profile stalk or. Um, or I mentioned, you know, well, you know, yeah, I've been a, in a, in a law enforcement instructor for umpteen years and also had a bunch of private training. And they're like, oh, well, you're, you're in this for profit. You're, you're just telling people to go, go train uh, so, so you can attract more clientele. I'm like, well, that would be a great argument, but I don't do private training. Like, I, I only do things you know, related to my agency, my, my career field. So that kind of blows that, that argument out of the water. Don't I mean, I know it's different for you, but. Don't you love when people listen to respond, not to understand? Ah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy them taking the bait. What can I say? That's, that's the snarky <laughs> condescending side of me that I, I will, 
the, uh, face, the, and the people of Facebook land are just so easy. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Cause they take, <laughs> either they take the internet not serious at all or they take it way too serious. Yeah. They're, they're, there's, there's very little happy medium. <laughs> there's very little balance, but whatever. Uh, well, to end it all, uh, do you, if you, in the, in the perfect world of things, how much more, uh, and that's, uh, man, that's subjective. That's, it'd be hard to actually put a, a value on, um, how much more time and, and shooting training would you give to just regular old law enforcement officers, not SWAT guys? Cause that's who we see on the most, most of the time anyway, is patrol cops. Yeah. Um, and then how high, how much higher of, of the standards would you make them? Ooh, that last part, that's, that's kind of hard to say. Um, I know that at least here uh, at some of the uh, state academies, they, uh, the cadre are changing the basic level training uh, away from the old traditional stuff. Um, you know, set curriculum, basically uh, training for the qualification um, because that's, that's been a thing. Um, they're getting away from that. They're, they're doing more in less time. Like they're being more efficient with the training time, um, moving into things that typically don't really get practiced or, or, or taught in a basic academy. So I'm happy for that. I'm I'm happy that that's going on and we're getting away from the old, you know, stand there and shoot the qualification basically over and over. Yeah, you passed. <laughs> or, um, oh, you didn't pass. You got to do it again. But uh, you know, as far as getting more I think if 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 nothing else if if the training staff for whatever any given agency would just encourage their uh their employees to dry fire more um go through you know visualize situations more uh just get some extra reps in on their own time if they would just encourage that um you're, you're and then had someone maybe teach them how <coughs> to practice yeah yeah teach them like what to look for in dry fire what 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 to work on um what to how to diagnose uh, in dry fire because learning how think, to self-diagnose yes is a big deal. learning how to self-diagnose and that's something that that is a huge so progression you, for for an individual so you wouldn't necessarily add more training you would just well i'm, I'm thinking the, realistically yeah realistically <laughs> teach folks how to train themselves on their own off time yeah yeah like you I, do I, in your office that's going to be the most uh cost effective method that's that's available to everyone yeah that there's really there there's no cost to other than maybe 10 minutes a day at best uh, well I, you know from from an agency perspective there's no cost other than maybe the initial course to show them hey these are the things here's how to do it and here's what to look for the self-diagnosis part oh um, man so what if we came up with a law enforcement only uh how to practice and self-diagnose continuing education i mean it would be a good deal. thing it would be a good thing. Of course, at the end of the day, you're still going to have guys who come up with every excuse in the book not to do that, or oh, they're not paying me for it, so I'm not going to fool with it, you know. Or we're I got, I got to work them. overtime to pay off this new four wheeler I, I, I bought, really <laughs> can't afford. I mean, it's it's a constant battle. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe encouraging uh, maybe encouraging them to. Uh, how to put this, set up more action, uh, action style pistol shooting. Um, keep it in a defensive context, let's say. Uh, maybe more IDPA biased. Um, but have them do that. Ha give them actual training instead of just shooting qualification because we all know that qualification isn't training. No, it's. I mean, it's a, it's a basic. And you heard me say it last night. Most uh, instructors in that realm of things are just qualification facilitators. Yes, they're not instructors. Yes, I mean a qualification. There's 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 basically 
little to no coaching and we we do that for a reason we're not trying to change somebody's style up mid qualification we just want to, unless there's just a we just egregious get safety issue out. yeah right because again a qualification is nothing more than uh, a basic demonstration of proficiency i i say it's i can get my gun out of the holster and it helps with liability insurance <laughs> yeah yeah it's a state requirement it's a state requirement from yeah. you know 1940 nothing or whatever um <laughs> We need to, we we really that needs to be revamped, but that's something that's only going to happen when the when state board of minimum standards or state post whatever they're called uh, when they make that happen. And yeah. A lot of times you've got uh, like the those those folks are are so far removed from the actual really uh, boots on yeah. the ground that uh, it's barking up the wrong tree. Right, I agree. So we could we could uh, we could in a perfect world, just integrate more encouragement or self-diagnosis, self-practice on your own time, five, mm-hmm. ten minutes of dry fire every day, every other day. If if you did if they knew how to do it, you'd have to teach them how to do it. If if every guy would just do ten practice draws in the mirror yeah. in the bathroom. And we tell we tell new guys that, like, hey, you know, but before when you when you get dressed, before you walk out the door. Do your gear check, you know, check, Head make sure you check. got everything, make sure your yeah. radio turns on, your flashlight works, make sure you got your a round in your chamber, and right, off. your sights haven't moved, or your tritium everything. dot hasn't fallen out, All right, do a gear check. Your boot laces are double tied. Yeah, I mean, get, and then get get five or double ten, yeah. they don't have to be lightning fast, they can no. be slow, just, you know, start ingraining that. that Proper neural pathways. Yes. I almost you used, can I almost used the yep. M word, the, the double M word, and I had to catch myself. Oh, muscle memories. Ooh. Yeah, we all know what we mean when we say that. It's <laughs> the nerds like me. They're like, no, that's not correct. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. But standards are standards. We have to have them. Are they ideal in some cases? No. But do they do their job? Yes. Could they be better? Yes. Could we afford them to be as good as we want them? Probably not. No. <laughs> At the end of the day, cops still have to be cops, not no way action shooters right, winning not matches. Shooters. <laughs> right. I mean, it is what it is. Bottom line. And we need to have that perspective. Cops, police are a reflection of society. Yeah. Just like you go to the local gun range any given Saturday afternoon. You've got guys like us who are, you know, hammering it out. You've got guys who are putting more rounds in the uh, in the target frame than they are in in the target. They're just relieving stress. They're just out yeah, they're just out there. Gun. Yeah, they're just out there uh, enjoying some uh, uh, ballistic therapy. Um, <laughs> but uh, cops are no different. Yeah, you know, no just 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 like with fitness. Yeah, you got guys who take it upon themselves or have a job requirement that are a job description that requires fitness. And then you have guys who couldn't run to the end of the driveway and their life <laughs> depended on it. And, and I hate it. I, it I think that, it I, but it is what it is. Um, and, you know, outside of, you know, your, your, your typical high speed guys who love making, making arrests, uh, <laughs> you, you've got report takers too. And, they don't care about chasing. Everybody has guys. a place. Yeah, everybody has a place. That that's exactly right. And an investigator sitting behind a, a desk for eight hours a day doesn't necessarily have to be in superb yeah. shape. That's well, not their primary job. So back to the perspective thing, you know, and you and you've heard it. You've heard it. You know, the the whole mantra of oh, you're a cop, you must suck at shooting. I, I say let's put those pitchforks and torches down. They they're great at being cops. So what if they don't shoot to our level of standards? They well, don't have to. That that is this this fatal error of thinking that cops are experts at everything. Or just because they be carry experts. a gun doesn't mean they're negative. And that's totally that's totally cool. Right. That that's 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 just something that has become, especially in the last decade or so, we have be, we have become so overly critical. Of everything, of first off. Everything. Golly. Yeah, everything in, in life in general. You lose perspective of what reality is. But they are expecting guys who, in some cases, I mean, you know, when I started, I was making $10.70 an hour. Um, You know, 
you're expecting somebody making eating a ten, ten or ham 11, sandwich for lunch every day, basically. Ten or eleven dollars an hour, you're expecting them to be a lawyer, be a competitive shooter, be a jujitsu master, <laughs> be all this. Be all it can be. <laughs> Their first day out of the academy. Yeah, it's just not feasible. And there there's absolutely no way, just like for the viewers out there, whatever you do for a living, if you if you if you're Ten a carpenter, years in, you may not even be that good. You're a carpenter, if you're a lawyer, if you're a whatever, you you did not know everything immediately starting in your occupation. Some of us thought we did because we were just on the you, peak of Mount you, Stupid. Well, right. <laughs> yes. Yes. The Dunning Kruger was so strong. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, you look back after ten years of doing it, you realize, holy crap, I have learned so much. I have developed so much. I've, I've found so many shortcuts or yeah. efficiencies. And how to do things i've learned so much you know again i'm 16 years into my uh career kind of trending towards the the twilight if you will uh and i've been investigating for more or less seven years of that and i still there are still times every day i have questions you know there are times i yeah i have to crack the books there's just no way you're ever going to know everything you need to know and you can't expect you can just do the best guys who are a reflection of society mm -hmm. to always make the right call, the right decision. We're human. Under stress. Yeah, we're human. We we're are air to fail. Or uh, what's up? Uh, we are to, to fail as to human or something. I can't remember what. Uh, yeah, something like that. I'm not a platitudes guy. <laughs> I can't remember what. To err is humans. I, to err is human. That's what it is, I think. Something. I don't know. Somebody, All right, well, somebody will drop you a comment with the yeah. Break. <laughs> Give Jason a follow. Uh, I'll tag him on all the socials. Uh, Hot Iron Gun Works, Jason Perez, actual. <laughs> Hot Iron Actual, yeah. <laughs> Hot Iron Actual. Um, it's cheesy. So, yeah, now we get to go see how bad we suck at a USBSA match mm. 40, 45 minutes away from here with an occluded dot because, yeah, my, he's going to do the occluded thing. My, my dot. Uh, is not getting bright enough for some reason, yeah. and we found that out late last night. So hey, at least you have two eyes and you can occlude it and it work. I also have a backup gun that may may end up coming out. Cool. All right, thanks, Jason. Let's go uh, get geared up and do All our right. thing. <laughs>